Good morning and thank you for joining us for this morning's edition of the Corporate Reporting and Assurance Tech Talk. I'm Loshni Naidu from the Corporate Reporting team, responsible for sustainability, integrated reporting and integrated thinking. So first up this morning, we have Yvette Lang, who is an adjunct professor within the auditing division at the School of Accountancy at Wits University. As part of her role at Wits, Yvette is the course coordinator for integrated reporting and integrated thinking related executive level short courses. She lectures on various auditing and integrated reporting related topics to CTA and master students, and is also a member of the school's Center of Critical Accounting and Auditing Research. This morning, Yvette is going to discuss its technical report, accounting, governance, and integrated thinking in the context of COVID-19. Good morning and welcome, Yvette. Good morning, Lashni, and morning to everybody. Okay, so um, yeah, I have a presentation that I'm just going to, to take you through. Um, it's really a pleasure to have an opportunity to share the findings of our um, COVID-19 technical report. And I'm going to specifically be focusing on the governance, governance and integrated thinking, thinking aspects, aspects for this morning's session. Although I'll show you there is some, some other content available in the technical report. I have left some time for the end of the session, so please jot down any comments or questions you might want to raise um, just at the end of my session. I also have my contact details on the last slide, which will be made available to you. So if you want to get into contact for any reason, that will be available too. Okay, so I'm just going to give you an overview of the report. And as I mentioned, focus on the governance and integrated thinking highlights, and then we'll have some time for, for questions and comments. So this is what the report looks like, and it was produced by our Center for Critical Accounting and Auditing Research, which is, which is based at WITS. And we also had additional input from other academics that are also within our School of Accountancy. So at this point in time, this report was now produced a few months ago. So I think when you read it, that context should be at the back of your mind. Um, but most of the points are still very relevant. Um, and we produced it at the time to really assist other academics and boards and, and other relevant parties in areas where their focus should be within the context of, of COVID-19 and did a bit of research to support some of those considerations, which I will take you through. So we have um, a foreword, which was uh, written by Professor Mervyn King, and he's now based at, at our Wits Business School. Um, of course, Professor King is, is really a great driver of integrated thinking, and he's especially convinced of the important role integrated thinking is going to play for the survival of companies in the time of COVID, and um, especially where coronanomics, as he likes to call it, um, is really at play and affecting our, our economy quite severely. So within the report, you'll find a, a section on, on governance, there's also a section on financial reporting, auditing considerations, um, and this was more, um, more around lockdown conditions and how auditing can, can take place. And then also some tax technical issues. Then we have an integrated thinking perspective on, on COVID-19 within the report and re rounded up with uh, biodiversity and the SDGs. So that last section I'm not going to go into detail on, but it's quite interesting because one would wonder, you know, why is that here in a COVID report? And we heard um, some more from the author of that section, Professor Jill Atkins, earlier this week. And really it's looking at, you know, the pandemic is, is potentially directly as a result of biodiversity destruction. You know, as people um, move more concentrated into to urban areas, the need for food causes you know, different meat sources to be looked at, and, and there you have pandemic on your hands. So quite an, quite an interesting uh, aspect of, of COVID as well, and how that factors into uh, company risk assessment and, and management. Okay, so just to, to set the scene a bit more, um, we'll just have a look at the, this, this graph on the page. So I mean, we all appreciate the effect which, which the pandemic is having on the global economy and closer to home, the likelihood of a, 
a 6% contraction, that percentage may have, have moved since these stats. Um, a 6% contraction in South Africa's economy is now a real possibility. Um, and we don't know exactly, you know, what it's going to take for our economy to recover. So one thing we did at the time of preparing this report was to look at the effect on the economy by looking at the JSE All Share Index. Okay, so over the period shown, which is really where the virus emerged in other parts of the world to our big event on the 6th of March in, in, within South Africa and up until April, we see that there's an, a 28% fall in the, the JSE All Share Index. So really, if you look at the graph, the decline occurs over 10 days from the first detected case, which is on the 6th of March. And then from that lowest point, the market actually recouped some losses with the index climbing 2% in the following 17 days. And then by the 16th of April, overall, the All Share Index was down 15% from, from the 11th of January. So quite interesting that, you know, perhaps the the, the index didn't react as severely as what one might have expected with all the lockdown activities. Um, but I guess what we, you know what we found is that the information is not really suggesting that COVID nineteen is immaterial or you know not important to consider if we see that there wasn't such severe movement here. Um, but the behavioural finance research showed us that or warns us that people are not always scientific when they identify and respond to risk. So just, just to bear that in mind. So the message really to reinforce, have, having had a look at that, was that a careful and meth methodical response is required by all stakeholders and specifically investors and shareholders, um, rather than any, any knee-jerk reactions. So, so that was what the takeaway from, from this was for us. Right, so just to take you through some of our, our governance findings in terms of what the, the focus areas need to really be um, on the part of the board. And I'll start by just highlighting an important point I've, I've included at the bottom. And that is really, obviously the board, the governing body has a crucial role to play in, in steering the company through, through all the challenges they're facing now. But for the board just to be very mindful that their role is really to, to provide that strategic direction and have that, yes, short-term view to deal with the immediate crises, but also to look into the longer term and provide that strategic direction. Because what you, you find sometimes in these times is that the board would tend to get involved in operational daily management tasks to, to get the company through, but, but that doesn't always have a good outcome. Um, if the board's not playing their role of providing strategic direction because there's then no longer term view that's being um, driven. So yeah, with that in mind, if we just look at a few of the aspects that um, we've, we've looked into. So in terms of business continuity, I mean, obviously governance really emphasizes the importance of business continuity and resilience uh, plans as part of risk management. And what we've seen is that COVID-19 may well result in material uncertainty and, and that could affect the going concern assumption for the organization. So what it's, what it's saying is that it's really important for boards to obtain regular updates on the organization's ability to continue as a going concern and to make sure they fully understand what management's plans are to, to ensure continuing business viability. And these plans could range. So you know, in the past few months, it could have been accessing government relief funds. So, you know, what are what are the plans around that? And then obviously, or unfortunately, we might be seeing um, the extreme of boards initiating business rescue proceedings if if they're not able to, to manage and contain all the, the challenges they're experiencing. And um, the next area is around balanced agility. And I think this is quite a, so almost a softer issue. But it's really around decision making. So decision making needs to happen very quickly in, in a time where there's so many challenges on the table. However, it's important that this isn't, you know, this, this doesn't mean that governance is abandoned for the sake of, of speed. Okay, so what, what we found and, and recommend is that well-governed companies 
should really have a framework in place which defines what an expedited decision making process looks like for them. And that process should be formulated in such a way that good governance is balanced with flexibility required to respond um, in, in a time of crisis. Okay, then financial matters, and I think, you know, we're all quite fully aware of, of the impact here. So it will be, it's really key for boards and audit committees to consider um, reviewing the capital allocation decisions. And, and the, the one that we've seen a lot of is dividend policies. So we've seen many companies already announcing no dividend payments until really there's more certainty around trading impacts. Um, as, and as I mentioned, this was written at a time where there was a lot more harder lockdown. So obviously the situation is, is improving, but, but still of relevance. And then cash flow. Cash flow is, is, cash is king, as we know. So reviewing flat cash flow forecasts is also really important for the board and management to conserve cash in, in the short and medium term. And then the, the hot topic always around remuneration, executive remuneration. I mean, we saw um, in the earlier days of lockdown that there was a lot in the media about um, senior executives taking pay cuts in their remuneration to be able to contribute and support the, the COVID-19 relief effort. And I think specifically for South Africa, where we um, already a country plagued by income inequality, even before the lockdown, um, what we're going to see is that boards are really going to come under more increased scrutiny for remuneration policies and practices as people are start, you know, may start losing their jobs, et cetera, et cetera. So these and retrenchments, we've seen a lot of that. So the remuneration policies really need to be thought, need to be guided by a collective approach to firstly avoiding job losses as far as possible and preserving income, and especially for the most vulnerable employees. So I think um, there's going to be a lot of focus on boards when they, they come out with remuneration um, reporting going forward, even more so than what we, we normally see. And then the last aspect of governance that I'd like to just raise is really the real, the real importance of stakeholder engagement. I mean, obviously it's always important, but in a, a challenging time for companies, collective engagement, so engagement with all key parties is more likely to yield uh, better long-term results. And what the board, what it's really important for the board to do is make sure it understands management plans for communicating with all stakeholder groups. Because what we've seen is that boards tend to focus on the providers of financial capital. That's certainly what we've seen with the initial COVID reporting and communication. And the boards should just remember that it needs to be communication beyond just our investors and, and financial providers of capital. Um, otherwise, companies may face some, some issues with, with the other stakeholder groups if, it's not, if they're not transparent about things that they're doing, how they're protecting their employees, customers, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So what we also wanted to get a feel for is, well, what are companies then actually communicating about COVID-19? So it was quite, quite early days when we, we did this research. So there wasn't any integrated reports or um, annual reports or the like that, that had really come out that would have included COVID-19 impact. Um, so we had a look at SENS announcements. Okay, so while SENS announcements, I mean, they don't provide a complete account of corporate response to the market, they definitely do provide a sense of the issues which, which companies are actively managing um, and what, what they find is important to get out to the marketplace. So it was, it was quite a useful exercise to have a look at all the SENS announcements um, across the JC listed companies, the, the top 40. And as you can see on the graph, almost half of the content of those, those announcements really did um, provide some information or update regarding COVID-19. Um, and the typically companies included a brief explanation of the lockdown and how they were responding. So it would cover things like which operations have, have needed to, to stop because of the lockdown, 
um, a lot of focus on what strict hygiene protocols they were implementing for the staff and for the customers. And obviously a lot on, you know, the statements on how the financial results will be potentially impacted um, through through all the, the pandemic uh, issues um, with, a, with a special focus on cash flows. So I think the takeaway for me and for us on this analysis was that, you know, it's really important that listed companies um, provide clear and transparent reporting around these issues. So it was quite positive to see that the sense announcements were giving us some indication that companies are responding thoughtfully on COVID-19 and reporting as transparently um, as, as they could. And, and I think it's going to be interesting as more and more integrated reports are coming out now to see um, what is being included in financial statements uh, in integrated reports when, when these start becoming due. Right, so just moving on to the integrated thinking perspective. So, so just back to basics, what is integrated thinking? I mean, it's essentially about a, a multi-capital approach to value creation and it's also multiple time. So looking at it over the short, medium and long term and multi-stakeholder. So, so I always think about it, the, the multiples, multiple capital, multiple stakeholders, multiple timelines, all those things need to be considered in order, in order to really think in an integrated way about the business. And what we found, and as I mentioned, Mervyn King also really supporting this idea, is that thinking in this way is really providing the, the useful way that boards can use to tackle the challenges they're facing at this time. So it's really a time of crisis, and what you usually find is that a board would tend to focus on the short, immediate term when they're in a time of crisis. However, that's unfortunately not going to be what helps companies survive into the future. So they're really going to need to think long and hard about the medium and long-term effects of the pandemic on their value creation, preservation, etc. And this needs to be characterized by dynamic decision making, as we said, not at the expense of good governance and, and real proactive, inclusive stakeholder engagement, which I've, which I've also talked to. So in the report, um, and that's the figure six I've got on the screen, we summarize a few um, sort of top tips to, to, help, with, to help boards um, consider and promote integrated thinking through all the decision making. Um, so some of the things we, we talk about is, so consider the impacts of your decisions on all stakeholders and all capitals. Um, action, action speak louder than words. So can't just be talk, it needs to actually be filtered into um, decision making and actions that are taken um, and really building integrated thinking into all aspects. So if we're thinking about what our risks are, if we're thinking about what our strategy and our business model should look like, always thinking across those multiples. And I'm just going to, to digress with a little um, story that I have from my time at PwC. And that's the, the glasses story. So it's just a symbolic way one of our clients had is that they had some, some of those like plastic glasses on all the tables in all their boardrooms. And what, what that really was there to encourage and symbolize was when I get into the boardroom or the meeting room, I put these glasses on and it reminds me that I need to look at everything we're discussing with this integrated thinking lens. So every time I discuss something and want to make a decision, have I thought about the effect on all the capitals? Have I thought about the effect on all the stakeholders? And have I considered all the terms? So how these decisions will affect the short, medium and long term. So I'm not saying everyone needs to have these glasses, but it's just a nice, you know, symbolic way of making sure people are thinking in that way all the time. And they had quite a lot of success with that, with that approach. So yeah, so just to, to round off on this slide, so the key takeaway here is that all material decisions made in this time should be guided by the company's purpose and values. Really, really important. And I'm going to, to touch on that 
next. Okay, so unfortunately, a crisis happens, and it's it's been quite devastating. But um, there there must be a silver lining. There must be an opportunity that comes out of the crisis. And I think what we've seen with our research is that COVID has really elevated a lot of the issues we've been trying to work on as as a as a world for a number of years. So. Many of the issues such as poverty, access to healthcare, have really, really come to the fore and made people really pay attention. So the silver lining to the crisis is that it's really an opportunity for companies to take a step back and say, in determining my recovery plans for COVID, what can I do better to contribute towards environmental, social issues, etc.? So just two areas just to, to support that view. What was very positive with sustainable investments is we saw that companies that have a strong track record in ESG, so environmental, social, and governance, um, they really performed comparatively better to companies that don't focus on ESG matters. So they obviously had losses as well, but compared to their counterparts, we've got a, a UK stat, the HSBC found that the share prices of these companies outperformed their counterparts by up to 5.7% in the first quarter of 2020. So you'll see a lot of articles that investors are really sitting up and taking note that ESG companies tended to outperform non-ESG focused companies in this time. And, and I hope that's really a, a catalyst for, for change going forward. We also have um, some guidance and I'm just going to flip to that, I'm not going to go into it in any amount of detail, that the ICGN, the International Corporate Governance Network, put out. And it's really a set of questions for investors to use and evaluate how boards, how well boards have responded to the crisis. So I think it's an excellent set of questions under any circumstances to see how a board is, is managing and leading Managing is not the right word. Let's talk about leading and directing, um, and especially in a time of crisis. So please do, do take a look at those in the report. And then lastly, just to, to look at rethinking purpose and value. So for me, company purpose is always important. And, and what I think we're seeing already and what we will see is that a company's purpose will certainly be put to test by the stakeholders. Because it will really be, you know, how are decisions made? What is the company's real purpose? So companies need to be prepared to, to show, to demonstrate, to respond how any decisions they have made in response to the COVID crisis are grounded in really a broader understanding, evaluation of their own value creation and long-term sustainability. And you might, you might see, and we've seen it already, business models being refined some cases totally repurposed, redeveloped um, to drive these changes. And then just to, to round off on this point, um, we have, I have a quote from Mr. Allen of Bain and Company who said, instead of snapping back to the way you were, radically simplify what you do and how you do it and respond faster to your changing customers and environment. So really highlighting that, you know, it's, it's been a devastating time but let's make sure we get the best out of it. So companies need to take a step back and say, how do we do better in all these aspects so that we're better positioned if something you know, like this ever does happen again? So yeah, just to round off on that quote. So I think the crisis certainly provides much to think about in the world of governance, business, sustainability. And uh, I trust that sharing some of these insights from our technical report uh, will stimulate your thinking in terms of how you in, in your various roles can really contribute to helping solve these important problems, and of which I'm afraid there seem to be quite a lot at this point in time. So yeah, thank you for your time and attention. And if you have any questions and comments, I'm happy to, to take that now. Thanks, Lashni. Thank you so much, Yvette. That was 
absolutely interesting and fascinating. I'm particularly interested in that last quote by Mr. Allen. So hopefully post-COVID crisis, we don't snap back to what we were doing pre-COVID. Uh, because I think there's probably a lot of innovation that has happened in this last few months. Um, just as a one question that I do have in terms of future, do, do you guys plan on doing any further research to look at what companies have been reporting on during this crisis in terms of their COVID-19 responses in the integrated reports at a later stage? Yeah, so we've already started work on that in a particular industry for, for a particular purpose. So um, in this case, it was the retail industry, having a look at reporting, um, what's come out. Uh, but we have to wait a bit because there's still a lot of reporting that's yet to happen. Um, but we have started the process, yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Yvette. Um, just one more. Uh, if anybody does want to access the report, uh, where can they go to find it? Um, okay, so I have on the slide deck that will be made available to participants. Um, I've included the, the link in, in that. I think it was one of the earlier slides. Um, but it is on our VET School of Accountancy research page. So if you, if you access that, it's available there. Thank you so much, Yvette. Thank you so much for sharing your, the research and the work that this is currently doing. Um, have a great day.